Hello there dear patrons! I'm so excited to share with you another painting walkthrough tutorial. Um, this one is one of my previous paintings titled Glow and it is oil on paper. One of the first things I want to talk about is how to paint with oil paints on paper. One thing you need to keep in mind is that paper is porous and it will absorb the oils of your paint. Um, which will help your paint dry a little faster, but also the oils of the paint can deteriorate the paper over time, so it may not be archival. Um, depending on what kind of paper you use, it can, uh, you know, it can happen sooner rather than later. So to avoid that problem, you can very simply gesso your paper with a couple layers. Um, with this paper, I used um, Liquitex matte medium, so it's a clear um, really sturdy. Um, it's a very fine toothed uh, medium and I love it. I use it for uh, sealing all of my drawings off. And about two layers of that in and your paper is protected. Um, I use Strathmore multimedia paper. It's very heavy like cardstock and it's also very smooth. So I really like how it acts like a panel when you um, draw on it and seal the drawing off. So what I want to talk about with this painting, um, as you can see, there wasn't any layer build up here. I'm doing this all wet on wet and it's all very rainbow colors. Um, I'm using my rainbow palette. If you guys read my blog, um, I can post the colors in the video description. So what I want to mainly cover today is um, kind of trying to explain this process because this is a wet on wet painting. I did it all in one sitting. Um, and it, it's a small piece, it's only like four by five inches, so it was possible to do that. Um, but the main thing that I want you guys to take away from this is the importance of experimenting with your color palette and your paints and getting a very good grasp of what every color can do with all of your other colors, how you can mix them. And this is something that comes with time and practice and just having fun with the color. I guess that's the second point that I want you guys to take away is um, when I make these rainbow paintings like this with the bubbles and the fairies and stuff, um, they're very whimsical and fun looking. And the main goal that I have for these paintings when I sit down is to just have fun with my colors. That's my number one inspiration is these bright potent paints and they're just so fun to blend and touch around and stuff like that so when you start laying down a color um, you can see how the edge of this bubble is a rainbow like it goes from blue to pink to green and then back to some other colors that I'll fix later um, it uh, I didn't plan that out I didn't plan where to put each green or blue um, I just kind of knew that I wanted it to be rainbowy and blurry and very pretty and that's something that comes with, again, getting to know your paint and your medium. You can do this in watercolor, you could do this in acrylic, you could color this with colored pencils um, and get the same image, but you're only going to get the seamless blend of rainbow uh, hues and the rainbows working together if you know what colors go need to go where. So here we are going into the... I've got the bubble in and it's basically really blurry shapes and um, I left the fairy to do later. But uh, I know I wanted the background to be more rainbowy and blurry so I'm just patching in colors here and there and you'll see me smudge them around. I'm not trying to make any distinctive shapes really because I know I'm going to go back and add like little sunlight highlights or fairy sparkles or things like that. I just want to kind of cover the area with paint. And you don't have to do something like this wet on wet. I just happen to work fast, which sometimes is not a good thing. So don't like try and be as fast as I am. Um, I would say that this painting took maybe eight hours tops to make. I might have had to stop in between um, to get up and eat or something. But um, uh, yeah, it was all in one evening. Um, so I'm using... Again, I'm working from large to smaller brushes, so you saw me start out with like, well, with the bubble I started out with a smaller brush, but the background I'm going from big to small. And right now I'm trying to fix these mushrooms on the right hand corner, I think I end up wiping them off, but um, which is fine, I do that all the time. Um, and I freehand the bubble, I mean you can trace it if you need to, that's fine, um, but um, I'm not trying to keep a very sharp line 
of this circle. And I do the same thing when I make a moon in one of my paintings. Um, if you look closely, you won't see a definitive, you know, circle and outside of the circle sharp edge or line. Um, it's kind of blends into itself or into the background and if you try to uh, trace over and find the circle, you might lose it a little bit. Um, and I kind of do that intentionally and, <laughs> well, one, it's a lot easier to do it that way. You don't have to strive to get a perfect circle on your canvas. Um, but two, it makes it look, I think, more realistic. And if you, um, especially for the moon or if I'm doing a sun or something like that, the circle, I like it to be a little imperfect. It makes it more um, like you're looking at it with your own eyes instead of looking at a photograph. Um, and that's just my preference. You guys don't have to do that. But um, this painting is a really good example of just honestly practicing blending. And this painting could have gone sideways. It could not have worked out in the end because of how I randomly lay colors down. Um, sometimes I do. I don't. Sometimes I don't post my failures, and I really should share those with you guys. But there are a couple pieces where I started them, and I on, they looked awful, and I started over or wiped it off or something. So another thing I want to talk about, um, since this painting is a lot of just messing around with the rainbow blending and things like that, there's not a lot of shapes or shading to talk about. It's just a lot of brushwork and playing with how the colors sit together. But I do want to talk about how I start working with the background and covering my canvases and things like that in paint completely before I paint and do details. Um, not a lot of people, I mean, some people work this way, some people do it differently, everyone has their own process. Um, I prefer to get my canvas or panel or paper covered in paint and have the background done um, because it honestly helps me bring my mind's image closer to me and it gets a lot of ground covered um, initially. To where sometimes you don't need to add a lot of detail later you can just add a few more touches here and there um, and this painting is a really good example of that um, I'm sorry I say um a lot you guys <laughs> I'm trying to get really better at that another thing I want to point out with this piece is how the the lighting that I've picked out I wanted the light source to be coming from behind this bubble and this fairy and kind of from the upper side and I think I mentioned this in one of my other tutorials that my light sources tend to be very yellow and green and warm. Uh, they kind of are like that in nature that you, you'll notice that your highlights are warmer and your shadows are cooler. Mine are just really exaggerated. Okay, so now we're getting to the little accent leaves and flowers and things like that. And this is a good time to watch how painting wet into wet can really affect your shapes and things like that. I You can see that I pick up really dark blue and green and things like that to put in those leaves and um, they get blended and smeared as I lay them down and that's something I want. Um, again if you don't work wet into wet it'll look different. It, I think you should, I mean I recommend trying it just to see if you guys like it. I don't, if you do paint like that, then you know what I'm talking about. The paint kind of just, it makes it look more dreamy and more foggy. And I know that I want some mushrooms peeking out here and there, so I'm back to a smaller brush and they, the colors are getting muddied a little bit as I put them down into the green. Like I'm picking up a bright purple and as I lay it down, it uh, gets a little, you know, dulled down, but I think it really makes it look it fits into the painting and it doesn't look like there's a bright purple mushroom sitting there that's too bright. I think it brings it down to the tone of that corner of the painting. And when I do want to put a brighter patch of pink like I'm doing on these mushrooms, I can make that happen with just putting a little bit more paint on the brush and building up from there. And this is, again, something that you can do in multiple layers after the painting has dried if you want. I I just happen to work in all one sitting and I like how it looks when I don't do that. So sometimes I do layers, like on my larger paintings I have many layers that I work in a painting and it can sometimes be a hindrance to me just because that's how I work. Now this fairy was 
really fun to work on. She's obviously very tiny. <laughs> She's like the size of my thumbnail. And I don't want her to be extremely detailed because she's so small you wouldn't be able to see that much detail on her. Honestly, painting a face that small is near impossible. So I really love how you get the impression of this little woman sitting there with her cute little wings and stuff like that. And you can just tell her pose is suggested. I don't actually paint really an arm or an elbow. I just have a very vague shape of it's kind of like you're seeing her from far away if you saw you know a woman a few, you know a few hundred yards away you would just get the general outline and things like that and i guess that again ropes me into the same category as impressionists um not a lot of hyper realistic detail but so here i'm going in with the it's a it's actually a very small liner brush and i just wanted to add some more greenery and moss around her it's really easy to do again when your paint is wet you kind of just touch on areas and it gives the impression of some moss or some leaves or whatever really you want it to be i mean this is a fairy rainbow painting so it's whatever you think it is <laughs> so now we are getting to the fun part i've got a lot of my basic shapes down that i wanted in there and features that i wanted i wanted mushrooms and nice dark silhouetted leaves and the fairies done and now I get to add, um, you're going to start to see the painting really pop with all these small little highlights and details. And I'm just going back in with my, it's a really tiny angled brush. Uh, you can use whatever small brush you have, but if you don't have little brushes like this, you definitely should try them out. I'm starting to add, you know, little leaves and twigs and actually some sharper shapes to give it a little bit more definition. Okay, so now I've grabbed my angled shader brush. It's a flat brush. And how I create leaves this way is just to drag it in a very sharp vertical motion and kind of curve the brush at the right moment and it creates a leaf. And I decided to go in with this color onto my darker leaves and add highlights. So it really brings that light source back down to those darker shapes and makes it really look like those leaves are closer and they are in that setting and they're highlighted in the right way. And now I decided to uh, touch up these mushrooms a little bit and give them some spots. And this is my favorite part. <laughs> so I've got my small little, it's a very small filbert. I think it's a one size. This is what I create a little, uh, if you're working on stars or anything like that. Basically when I do paintings like this and I have these light spots, I'm just getting some white and it's very easy to do this with oils. You just touch it down and kind of wiggle it around and smooth it out and before you know it you have a lighter area and it is, you know, the color, uh, it turns out to be the color of what was already there. So that is really something that you should do wet and wet. If you do want to do it on a separate layer, obviously you'll have to mix a lighter color and make it fade into the background and make it a more, uh, and make it work that way. I hopped around so much with this painting with different brushes and I hope you guys are getting a grasp on kind of how I work with the rainbow colors and it's honestly all very spontaneous. There's not a method to this madness. I just go with the colors and put down what I want to see. If I want to see lots of pinks and purples, that's what I put down. So I really encourage you guys to um, experiment with your colors that way. So here's another main thing with uh, the bubble or, you know, if you, I, if you ever paint something like this, the highlight spots inside the bubble where the fairy's sitting are smaller and they're tighter together. So it kind of, I was trying to go for a, a magnifying effect, like she's uh, in there and you can see those light spots more concentrated because the bubble or globe she's in uh, is reflecting everything. And this is, uh, th again, this is kind of how I paint stars. This is just rainbow. Um, but I take, now I've got those fuzzy little highlight circles down and I've got a smaller brush now. And I go in and add a second highlight onto that first highlight. So the highlighting method is kind of you make your first highlight, break it up, and then you recreate it again with another, with another brush stroke. So that is it you guys thank you so much for watching uh this painting was a little difficult to give a tutorial on because it is small and spontaneous and i think again the main thing you should take away is just 
when you experiment with your colors and know what you're working with and you really get to know your supplies, what you can do with it. And you may not be painting a fairy rainbow scene, but maybe you just want to do something colorful. This can also apply to regular colors that aren't, you know, earth tones that aren't uh, rainbow or even flesh tones. When you know the full range and the full spectrum of the things that you have, you can really do anything you want. Also, this is a good example of knowing the difference between between painting wet into wet or a la prima and painting in layers. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought about this. If there's anything else you want to know about it, please ask me. Um, it's sometimes hard to cram in a lot of information into 20 minutes, even though it is a long time. But yeah, let me know. Bye guys.